Amen. Hey, welcome you all to this beautiful Sunday morning. As you all know, we stand for the reading of God's word in order to honor God's word. We will be looking at Acts, book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 1 to 9. I want to take this moment to welcome each one of you on this beautiful and a glorious Sunday. Bible says that every single day is a blessed day because God is present in those days. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. I have a hope that today is a blessed day. You might be saying, Pastor, we just passed a lot of storms. Doesn't matter. You still made it. One thing I know is as long as God is in my boat, me and my family, we will make it to the shore. I want you to have that assurance this morning. Let all distractions go out this morning. As long as Jesus is in your house, you and your house will make it to the shore. Amen. You know, something so beautiful is what does the Bible say? How does faith come? Faith comes from hearing and hearing no it is so beautiful bible does not say faith comes from what you heard many times we think oh it's the same bible verse it's the same story but god says if you want faith to come into your life it happens in the hearing and hearing daily of the word of god and therefore we're going to walk into reading of the scripture we're going to put it up on screen for those who do not have your bible we encourage you to get your bibles with you if not don't worry we got you covered we're going to put it up on screens for you the book of acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 9 shall we read that together if you've got it shout a hallelujah there you go so let's uh, let's read that together then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way whether men or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him Saul Saul the voice of the Lord so it became mute Saul Saul why are you persecuting me and he said who are you Lord then the Lord said I am Jesus whom you are persecuting it is hard for you to kick against the goads you know many of your translation might not have that I have a King James version or new King James version has this particular verse but many of your translation if you're using an ESV NIV you might not have that particular verse I'm going to come into and explain why that was missed or what is the meaning when when, when this was written by Luke when he wrote Acts chapter 9 it says then the Lord said I am Jesus whom you are persecuting it is hard for you to kick against the goat so he trembling and astonished said Lord what do you want me to do then the Lord said to him arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do and the men who journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but seeing no one then Saul arose from the ground and when his eyes were were open he saw no one but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus and he was there for how many days three days without sight neither ate nor drank anything this is the word of the Lord for this morning that we will be working over may God bless the hearing of his word you may be seated in the house of the Lord hallelujah may God bless each one of us if you don't mind just look at your neighbor and say it is so good to see you again it could be your spouse but it's okay just tell them just tell them Yes, it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. For all of you who are here for the first time, I would love to welcome you for our English service. Uh, it is a joy to see you this morning and to be in the land of the living and worship uh, worship a living God. Worship a living God. Hey, whenever we say, just look at your neighbor and say hi and bye, just take 40 seconds and not after that. You know, sometimes it becomes like the primary school. Then we have to, the teacher will have to say, hey, come back to the class. You know, sometimes it becomes a distraction out there. But let's get Get back into the house of if are you okay with me this morning right are you not okay with me this morning we are okay okay so that is good I just wanted to make sure that because I am under the weather I am hoping you guys are not under the weather whatever is the weather I know that God is over here so hey you know we've got this whole month that we are looking into the whole month that we are looking into a series called as unknown you know because we don't know our tomorrow and we do not know what our future holds in our life certainly there are so many uncertainties that come into our life there are so many situations that we cannot plan for many of us who are 
are striving for perfection in our life. We want to plan things way ahead of time. People want to plan by 35, they want to get married. No, actually people want to plan by 25, they want to get married. By 30, they want to have two kids. By 35, they want to buy their huge house. So there are a lot of plans that happen. When their plans does not happen and work out in their timelines, what happens is people start doubting themselves. And because they start doubting themselves, they also start doubting God. They feel that God is not present in midst of what is happening in their life. Only if you and I can submit our plans in the hands of the Lord who is a perfect planner. The last person that I would want to plan is myself for my life. I would just give it into the hands of the Lord and say, God, you know what? You plan my tomorrow because you have the best interest for me. You have the best interest for my family. That's the God that we serve. There are four things each Sunday that we are going to look into. We started last week with unknown, what is it? Idols. Today we are going to look at the unknown interruptions. That's what we're going to focus on. Unknown interruptions. In the next two weeks, unknown identities and unknown influences. How all of these unknowns, when it is coming to the knowns of our life, we don't know how to handle them. We did not know how to handle some of our unknown idols. Why do we have idols? Because we've got insecurity. Why do we have insecurity? Because we are not secure in the one who has called you and me. Right? That is why we create our own small idols. Idols of self-esteem, idols of pride, idols of ego, idols of social media. So many things that we create because we do not realize in whom you and I are secure in, in whom our future is secured in. Just because you couldn't make a particular exam does not mean God hates you. It just means that you might have to put a little more hard work and you're going to see the fruit of it. Not everything, every time is about God, something sometimes is about us also. We've got to put in our hard work, but submit our hard work in the hands of the Lord. And my Bible says, He will establish your ways. Today, what we're looking at is unknown interruptions. I don't know anybody who likes interruptions. You can have several kinds of interruptions, small, big, it will come in different sizes, it will come in different ages, it would come in two specific genders, male or female, God only created two genders, so I only know to speak about two genders. It will only come in two genders, male or female. Interruptions can be of many sort and we don't know how to handle our interruptions. Example, you have a tired Sunday morning and you go to Starbucks and you tell the barista you need a brown sugar oat milk shaken as and the barista looks at you and says, we don't have a brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso. Imagine how you feel. Right? I don't know. Many of you, I don't know if you guys drink a brown sugar. Okay, anyways. That's such a tongue twister for me because I had to learn that whole order myself. One of my friends, when he gave me his order, I was... Some, some of these guys, when they order some of the stuff, you know, they have so many specifications and customizable specifications. I am in awe when these guys order their coffee. Imagine your barista looks at you and say, hey, there is an interruption. We don't have your coffee. How are you going to deal with it? Suddenly, your family is going well. Things are journeying well, all of a sudden it's hit with a sickness. How do you handle those interruptions? Hey, your education was going well, but all of a sudden because of things that happened in your life, you were not able to concentrate on it and you could not make it through. How do you handle your interruption? You thought, you thought that your timelines were perfect, but maybe it did not match the timelines of heaven. How do you handle those interruptions? I want the church to listen to this very carefully. Interruptions always does not mean disruptions, it can actually mean directions to your destination. Can I repeat myself? Interruptions always does not mean disruption, which is a plan of God, absolutely not. God never intends anything for our harm. He never intends anything for our harm. I want you to believe that if any plan that God has for you, it is for our good. The last I checked my Bible, my Bible says everything good comes from the Lord. Anything and everything good. My family which is good, that is from the Lord. My education which is good, that is from the Lord. My church which is good, that is from the Lord. You and I that we are together, that is from the Lord. Anything good comes from the Lord. But you would often have interruptions in your life because that's life. 
Not every day is a Sunday, even though you want it to be a Sunday. Even though all you want to do is just go back home, put a throw on yourself, have some popcorn in your hand and watch Netflix. Maybe every Sunday, every day is not a Sunday. You've got life. There is Monday through Saturday. There is a grind that we go through. There is a season that we go through. But I want you to be rest assured in every season, one person who's going to be constantly with you is Christ Jesus. And that is why we show up on a Sunday to watch worship him in a community but Monday to Saturday we praise him in midst of our miseries hallelujah in midst of those interruptions it is up to you if you want to take your interruptions as a distraction or a direction can I introduce you to a story a beautiful lady who was born in in, 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 in Netherlands in in Netherlands she was a Dutch fam- she was from a Dutch family born to a watchmaker you know she has a beautiful story and her name is Cory Ten Boom I don't know how many of you know about her you know she was the one who was born at a time when Nazis came into the land of Netherlands and made a ruckus out there born in a watchmaker home she was the first female official watchmaker in Holland. She was making watches just as a regular business of our home. One evening in in 1942, a maid, mid of the night, there is a knock on her door. Couple of people standing out of her door and they were Jews who were afraid of the Nazis. They They were being persecuted by the Nazis. All this lady did is she could decide the interruption of her life to be a distraction from the supper that she was going to have with her family or a direction where God was leading her. You and I get to decide the interruptions of our life that could be in marriage, that could be in your personal life. You and I get to choose, hey God, are you in midst of those interruptions trying to use me to make a blessing out of me? Because not every story about you is about you, is about through you. I don't know if you and I realize that God uses human beings in midst of human beings to make a difference in the life of human beings. Sometimes we live in a superficial kind of a world. We watch a lot of Star Wars probably. We watch a a lot of comic movies probably. And we expect God to show up in a comic way. Hey, if God needs to be, he would show up in those ways. But I don't think God would use a comic way to show up in the lives of human beings when he can use you and me to make that difference. So every story in our life, every frame in our life, it ain't about just us. It is about through us where God wants to make his glory extend in this earth. She decided that day to open her house. Almost six people were hid in her basement. And because of that, she was captured by the Nazis, put up in the concentration camp. When she got out of the concentration camp is when she wrote the book, The Hidden Place. I love that book. You got to get a, if you can get a hand on that book, you would be encouraged. And this is what she says. And allow me to quote it. She says in the hiding place book, the measures of a life after all is not its duration. She says it's its donation. Allow me to repeat that. Cody says the measure of a life after all is not in its duration, but it, it's, it, 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 is, it is in its donation. It does not matter how many years we lived. It matters how many lives we transformed in the years we lived. It matters how many people we were able to encourage in the, in the moments we lived. It matters how many people we were able to stand with in the thicks and the thin when we had an opportunity in our life. You and I can choose the interruptions of our life to be as a complete addendum of a period or you and I can choose for it to be a comma. You can, you can write a story from the interruptions of your life. But how do we know how to deal with those interruptions? Because we have tried putting our trust on chariots. We have tried putting our trust on horses. We have put our trust on government. Nothing seems to be working. Nothing seems to be coming on our side. We don't know who's going to help us. And that is when the psalmist says, my help comes from the creator of heaven and the earth. 
how do you take your interruptions the question that we got to ask ourselves is in midst of the interruptions of our life how do we respond to it you can either be agonized you can be angry you can you can be depressed you can get yourself and box yourself into a corner and you would prefer not getting out of it or you can put a smile on your face knowing that the Christ who is within you is greater than that of the world knowing that the holy spirit resides within you who can help you to fight the battles that you're going through i don't know who this is for but if you're going through an interruption of your life where you thought things were going good but that is when you were hit with a sickness that is when you were hit with the news of your loved one that is when you were hit with the news of what you were expecting to happen hey this is for you because acts chapter 9 we see a very similar interruption interruption in the life of a man named as Saul who was after that called as Paul you know shaul in, in 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 hebrew the meaning of shaul in hebrew is the one who was asked for which means shaul or paul or saul was a response of a praying mother and a father the meaning of the word shaul itself means the one that i asked for the one that i prayed for thank god for some parents who have prayed for generations you know we live in a time and an age where womb has become a tomb where womb has become a dying place where people don't want to give birth to another life but thank god there are parents who decide to stand in midst of the thick and thin and say god i need a generation who will stand for you for your glory i don't care if they make enough money all i care is if they are able to please your name Shaul itself means the one that I asked for. Now we don't know why Saul's name was moved into Paul. Bible does not explicitly tell us the answer to why his name was changed to Paul. Have you met friends whose names are Bob, whose names are Jag? One day I met a friend named Jag and I asked him, "Hey, how did your parents put your decide your name to be as Jag?" He said, "No, my name is not Jag. My name is Jagneshwar." you know people change their name just to just to meet up with the with the with the crowd there was another guy named as bhuvaneshwar whose name became bob another name as shankar who became a shawn i don't understand right just so that people can connect with people in the living where where they are living similarly the times that paul was living the calling on his life was for gentiles now shaul is a jewish name a hebrew name but because of his call he had to change himself you know my dad the first time he saw me preach in a jeans he gave me a earful the first time he saw me wear just a shirt and not a white and black he gave me a near fall i said god please help me and please help my dad i don't know what you're going to do but that is the sunday he preached about saul becoming paul i said dad you need to become a different person and since then he has been thank god for that i hope he's not listening to me this morning you know interruptions are very common in life right jesus had the most interruptions in his life The wedding of Cana, Jesus had an interruption. Mother Mary comes and interrupts Jesus, right? When he was going to Jairus's daughter's house, he had an interruption by a lady who was bleeding for twelve years. There was an instance where Jesus was preaching in a house, preaching, amazing revival happening in the house. But the beauty is, the sermon was not recorded in the Bible, but the interruption got recorded in the Bible. You know what happened there were four friends who came with a mission who took the roof off I sometimes imagine if somebody comes here takes the roof off how are we going to react to it Jesus was so calm you know they took the roof off brought the guy down such an interruption and the beauty is when the normal sermon did not make it into the scripture the interruption made it to the scripture which means don't neglect the interruptions of your life it could be in any form it could be in any way of your life don't neglect the interruptions of your life because i don't know if you see it or not but god sees a purpose inside of that coming back to saul who as known as then becomes paul the life of saul a jewish boy it starts with acts chapter 7 that's where the first time we see about saul he was right there was stephen was being martyred stephen was a person who was a jewish himself so the question arose why did a jewish guy who is saul 
execute or, or, or vote in for another Jewish guy. Because for Jews, you cannot believe in anybody else other than Yahweh. Whereas Jesus came and said, hey, I am the lamb. I am the one that's going to sacrifice myself. You've got to believe in me. Stephen preaching that. Paul saw, Saul saw that. He did not like anybody going against his religion. Sometimes we got to look at our lives, the interruptions that happen in our life. Is there a reason behind it or not? So Paul is on a journey. Allow me to use the word Paul going forth and not Shaul or not Saul throughout the whole of the time that we're going to be spending. Paul takes up on a journey to kill anybody who is going against his religion who is going against his faith. He goes to the high priest. He goes to the people over there. He goes to the government and he says, give me that letter. I am going to go. I'm going to go to Damascus. I hear there are a Christ-centered people who call themselves a celebration church, who are always praying, who are always smiling. On a Sunday especially, they keep smiling at the preacher when they don't want to smile also. You know, I got to go and bind them in. God knocks some sense in our lives. Hallelujah. You know, so Saul goes, Paul goes in that journey. It's so funny. It's so funny. I was just reading again and again. It never says Paul fell off a horse. I don't know where horse came into the picture. Right? If you read Acts chapter 9, Bible does not say that Paul was riding a horse. It's so funny that, you know, yesterday when Praveen Jain was saying, I was listening to that. You know, the fruit in Garden of Eden was not banana, which, which Amachi told Praveen Chai was banana, which was not banana. It was not even apple also, right? We have made up our own fruits, whatever we like and whatever we don't like, we make our own fruits out of there. Sometimes we add so many things into the scripture, which is not actually to be found in the scripture. Never in the scripture does it write that Paul was riding a horse and he fell off of a horse. Almost from Jerusalem to Damascus, there is almost a distance of 135 miles. And generally in those days, people would walk. We don't know if he was on a horse, he was not on a horse. Either ways, he had an encounter with the Lord. This is what happens when you have an encounter with the one who calls you as his son or his daughter. He was going on a journey almost at the edge of Damascus. There is a huge light that shows up on his life. Now what we're going to do is three things. How to respond in midst of the interruptions of our life. First thing, first thing, pay attention to God's voice. What is it? The first thing is pay attention to God's voice. Look at verse 4. Then he fell to the ground, heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting? What does it say? What does it say? Why are you persecuting? Me. Me. God takes it personally when his children are in pain. God takes it personally when you are stranded. God takes it personally when you are hurting. He does not say, why are you persecuting my church? He does not say, why are you persecuting my people? But Jesus says, why are you persecuting? God takes it personally, ladies and gentlemen, when you and I are going through the miseries and the sorrows of our life. Rest assured, you have a God who shows up for you. That is why our faith is solid in Christ Jesus. Even though we don't see him, we know that he is at work for us. You know, God says, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who are you, Lord? I don't know who you are. You know, sometimes I've realized in our life, going through the battles of the spiritual battles of our life, enemy, your adversary has the power to cause delay, to cause distraction in your journey, but it does not have the power to cancel what the Lord has planned for you. Enemy does not have the power to cancel, to negate what God has already thought and purposed for you. You like it or not, you got to believe it in the season in the year of 2024 if God has promised that celebration church we are walking into a new beginning you will have you might see delays you might see distractions but I believe in a God who says I have a plan and a purpose for you and I will bring it into fruition in your life 
Hallelujah. Often you might want to see God when I'm going in my journey, my interruption in my itinerary. I don't know what your purpose is, but today I want to encourage somebody and tell you that God has a plan in that interruption of your life. Saul had no idea going to Damascus, he was going to be encountered. You don't know today after you get out of the service what you're going to encounter. One thing I want you to know is that when you are in midst of the noise of the world, World. Listen to the voice of, the, of, of your Lord in heaven. Oftentimes we are crowded with the noise of so many people around us. Noise of expectations around us. Noise of perfectionism around us. Noise of where we got to be according to what the society says around us. Only if, only if, only if you could focus where the Lord is trying to communicate to you and say, Hey, don't you worry son. Don't you worry daughter. I got a better future for you. I got your tomorrow covered. Why are you worrying? Why do you go to Canada? your burdens by yourself you know often I have realized we come to church we come to church knowing that we can cast all our burdens unto the Lord how many of you know that we can cast all our burdens unto the Lord Jacob can I use you just for an instance if you are okay yeah you know what Jacob and I we are traveling for example can you come with me how about let's travel for a second yeah you know Jacob and I we are traveling on a journey you, you got to be with me in the travel of the journey too right and I've got a huge burden in my life and Jacob reminds me hey pastor Samson do you know the Bible says that cast your burden unto the Lord and imagine Jacob is the Lord right now okay he is he is taller than me he is smarter than me so I'm gonna make him the Lord right now so I am carrying all the burdens and suddenly Jacob you're gonna take my burden off of me now I am giving it to Jacob who is the Lord yet my posture has not changed that's how many of us are that's how many of us you like thank you I'll take my burden back that's how unfortunately many of our life structures have become we give it to the Lord yet our mindset have not changed we give it to the Lord yet our postures have not changed only if you and I can give it unto the Lord knowing rest assured that he has got it God I don't know what the next scan is going to be he has got it I don't know when the next surgery is going to be hey he has got it because I know something yesterday pastor Alex and I we were praying you know sometimes doctor don't know what happens in your body because they were not the one who created your body it is your God who created your body and therefore yes I know medical team are there to help us out sometimes they don't know what's happening but I would walk into the presence of my almighty God who knows who breathed his life in me who made every organ in my body only if you and I could trust in him ladies and gentlemen in midst of our interruptions of our life pay attention to God's voice why because that is where you would ask the most astounding question God who are you I don't know what the response of the Lord for you would be for some of you he would say I am your father for some of you he would say I am your dear mother for some of you he would say I am your friend that you've been missing for some of you he would say I am the one that you just need to lean on he is not going to be the God for you he is a God for sinners but for you and me he is our father ladies and gentlemen hallelujah only if you can ask the Lord like Paul asked God who are you you know the second thing that we need to do in midst of our interruptions is acting on God's voice because many a times we listen to God's voice faith happens faith increases as I said by hearing but it does not matter if you and I don't put work into it it does not matter if you and I don't act on it and that is where we need to act on God's voice look at what Paul does so he trembling and astonished said Lord what do you want me to do this is the question we need to ask ourselves you know why if you can go to the previous slide ladies and gentlemen if you die if you guys don't mind go to the previous slide there is one particular instance where Paul where God says hey stop 
kicking against the goads. I said, right, that is a particular passage which you might not see in NIV or ESV. It is more of an ancient kind of a language which you would see in King James Version or NKJV. What is goads? You know, people who have seen farmers, I don't know how many of you have seen farmers, but I grew up in Bangalore where there were such villages where there used to be farming. And farmers would have a particular tool like a rod where it has two edge or uh, sharpie points on both the edges and they will put it on the oxen and when the oxen is not moving ahead when the oxen is pulling an attitude when the oxen says uh -uh, I ain't gonna go ahead the farmer is gonna poke the oxen now the oxen does not like being poked so what the oxen does it, it kicks back when the oxen kicks back, it hurts itself more because that is how the tool is connected. God says, stop fighting, just surrender. Maybe something sometimes where we are not, where, where we are not seeing God moving in our life, just ask yourself, are you taking the battle in your hand or are you leaving it in the hands of the Lord? That is the most difficult thing to do. That is the most difficult thing to do, trust me. But God says, you don't need to fight that battle by yourself. Just give it to me. Some of you have been running away from the presence of the Almighty God for a long time. This is for you. God says, stop kicking against the goads. Come back into the house of the Lord. Some of you have been running away from the love and the embrace of the Father. God says, stop doing that. Just come back into my house. But why? Because I have cared so many things that you can use from my house second thing that we got to do is when you realize that you have a father who have provided for you act on his voice Paul says God what do you want me to do you got to ask God God what is the purpose of my life not what my parents say that I got to be not what the society says what I got to be God what is the purpose of my life look at Paul he says Lord what do you want me to do Proverbs 16 verse 3 says commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established your thoughts will be established sometimes you might want to do something which according to the society might not be an honorable job might not be an honorable job and people might say, oh, you're not going to make enough money. You're not going to make enough life out of it. That's going to be a wrong decision. The only way you can have good life is only when you have bigger titles, bigger office spaces, the corner office in downtown Chicago. Absolutely not. Bible says, if you can commit your thoughts unto the hands of the Lord, he will establish the plans he has for you. But the first thing we got to do is ask the Lord God, what do you want me to do? Not Google. Not Google and say, which job pays me the most amount of money, so let me go to that education. No, no. Ask the Lord God, if I walk into IT, how can I be a glorifying body and a vessel for you? When I walk into the places that I walk into, how can I be a help for somebody else? That is where you and I got to be acting on God's voice. That is where the what comes into picture. The third and the last thing is going to be, you got to be adjusting to the will of God. Oh. That's the most toughest thing. That's the most toughest thing. Adjusting to the will of God is where, are you ready to go where God sends you? It was so funny, I was watching this online as well. You know, there was a preacher who was saying, many people are praying, God, send me to Africa. Send me to China for missions. But that's the same guy who goes to Starbucks and does not open his mouth and talk to the barista by saying, hey, how are you doing? Come to our church. We've got a church close by. Right? We want to go do missions outside. Hey, your mission is right there where you can see it, where you can touch it, where you can sense it. Right? The people that you come in contact with, that is your mission. You like it or not. Sometimes it's more easy for us. Oh, you know what? You know what? Let me just give some money. I'm done with my mission. Uh-uh. You know, there is a part in the Old Testament where the Bible says, you and I will be accounted for the lives that have come in our vicinity. Have we shared the goodness of the Almighty God unto them? That is our mission point, you like it or not. Where you and I got to adjust to the will of God. God, I don't know what your will for my life is. You know, there is a part where Paul writes, if you want to know what the main will of the Lord is, pray always, 
be happy always be joyful always christians have forgotten to put a smile on their face i was just thinking you know early morning you might just wake up you might you might cut your nose off while shaving yet smile because you still have nostrils where you can breathe from don't look at anybody else don't look at any other instance don't worry just look at me right <laughs> there might be problems that might come early in the morning evening you know from sundown to sun morning there might be issues that might walk you down but in midst of that only if you can say god i know you got it the way you got paul that's the purpose that he has in midst of the interruptions are you and i willing to adjust to the will of god you know it's so beautiful verse 9 says paul was there for how many days 3 days without sight neither did he eat anything nor did he drink anything this reminds me of the 3 days jesus was in the tomb which says if you need transformation first you need to die if you need transformation from god first your flesh needs to die if you need resurrection in your life that needs to happen uh, not by you just go hang yourself no you know what i'm talking about our flesh needs to die our fleshly desire needs to die god says paul i have a great plan and a purpose for you but you got to go sit in silence for 3 days i know you can see nothing i know you ain't going to be able to meet with people i know you do not have anybody around you who has got you who understands you but only if you can take that moment to reflect and to repent i have a purpose to transform you after jesus if there is anybody who is been influential over this earth is apostle paul is apostle paul but that did not happen in one day look at his life where he walked in for 3 days exactly the way jesus went through death for 3 days before he was resurrected i want to ask some of us today are there moments in our life where we need to ask ourselves god is there something i need to die to today is there something that i need to let go of this morning Is there something that I need to pursue more than what I've been holding on to? Is there something that I need to have in my heart more than what I already have in my heart? Is there some of the treasures that have taken over my heart more than your presence in my life? You want to be transformational, you got to go through the process of death the way Paul went through the process of death. Sometimes we don't have the strength to face the adversities of our life. You know why? Because we have not gone through the full fruition of death and walking into resurrection. You know, the reason I say that is because we don't like our plans being messed up. We don't like our plans being messed up. Last year we planned to go to Israel with my family in Dallas. I hated when that plan did not work out. the group said that we're going to go this year again i hate it when they called me up and said we have to cancel it we don't like our plans being messed up but sometimes are we so caught up in our plans that when people around us need us do we take a moment to stop for them or are we going to be busy in our plans what i really liked about jesus jesus was never fixed on his vision for the kingdom that he missed the needs of the people around him right jesus was never fixed on his mission of kingdom that he missed anybody around him he was going to jerusalem one day a blind man nobody would stop for that blind man he started screaming and yelling out the name of jesus jesus stopped for him would you and i stop for people out there who needs help and not isolate them and say you know what there's nothing that can be done there is no good that would come out of your life maybe that's something in your house itself have you just given up on few things in your life which you know that that was what you prayed for all your life but you have come to the conclusion god you know what there's nothing that's going to happen the way jesus pursued peter I want to encourage some people to pursue people until they come to the love of Christ Jesus. It's not our job to transform them, it is our job to sow seeds in their life. Thank God that God pursued us when we were trying to run away from him. 
every now and then I asked the Lord in my prayer God what did you see in me that you chose to deposit your spirit inside of me Only if you and I, in midst of that interruption, not take those interruption as distraction, not take those interruption as where God is trying to derail you, but take it as a moment of direction where you can walk into the destiny God has, not without Him. Therefore, stop, ask the Lord attentively, God, what do you want me to act on? And where do you want me to adjust my path on? Do you want me to adjust my attitude? Here I am. Do you want me to adjust the way I think? Here I am. Do you want me to adjust the things that I see? Here I am. Do you want me to adjust the way I speak? Here I am. Do you want me to adjust the way I behave? God, here I am. Do you want me to adjust the way I give? God, here I am. Do you want me to adjust the way I need to be in fellowship with my community? God, here I am. Here I am. I request the church to rise up in your feet this morning. As every Sunday we do, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit this morning as well, God, what is it that you want us to learn from this scripture today? Many of you might even be thinking about that interruption right now. The interruption could be in the form of a person. Interruption could be a form of a letter. Interruption could be in your job. Interruption could be in your health, in your finances, in your family, in your expectations. Only if you can surrender yourself and say, God, here I am. Whatever you want me to adjust, God, I am ready to adjust. In our church, God, what is it that you want us to adjust? We are ready to adjust. What is the point of praising you if you ain't there? What is the point of speaking about you if you ain't there? God, what is the point of worshipping you in our house if you ain't there? God, what we want is not religiosity. What we want is genuine love where we pursue you in our life, oh God. With job, no job. We don't care, oh God, as long as you are with us. We have food. We have no food. We don't care as long as you are with us. How many of you would dare to say, God, send me where you want me to go, but make sure oh God that you mend me oh Lord you break me oh God you make me as a vessel honorable unto you these are not easy words for us to say because God will really break us if there are things that needs to be broken ladies and gentlemen if there are aspects that need to be taken out he would purify us but that would be for our betterment only if you and I can just surrender in his hands the interruptions of your life is not to take you down because the last time I checked Bible, my word says, the scripture says, God's word says, He does not intend anything for our harm, but He intends only for our good. And therefore, Holy Spirit, we come to you as a community of faith today, asking what is it that you want us to learn from your scripture today? We've got these unknown, uh, uh, unknown interruptions where we don't know what's going to come up next, where we don't know how our tomorrow is going to be. But in midst of those unknown interruptions, oh God, the way Paul had a transformation, we ask unto you, oh God, that you would transform our thoughts, you would transform our behavior, you would transform our life, oh God. We pray, your Father in heaven, that circumstances around the families, circumstances around individuals, you will help us to see ahead of it, oh God from the sight that you see help us to see what you have planned for us and surrender ourselves trusting you a hundred percent to God help us this morning in order to claim what you have given in our life the promises that are delayed we ask unto you oh God we'd see the fruition in the name of Jesus if there are enemies trying to delay the promises of the almighty God which you have deposited for us the way Daniel chapter 9 we see a battle that happened we pray fervently oh God the promises for church the promises for families the promises for individuals in the name of Jesus will come into fruition oh father in heaven the glory is unto you and we bless your name. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' loving and gracious name we pray. Come on church, shout an amen, shout an amen. Give a clap offering unto the Lord. We're walking with the next set of worship unto giving unto the Lord. God bless us.